Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Today we're continuing with our series, Anatomy of a Mix. Today we're going to explain how we mix the song Tennessee Tea by Cumberland Road, country rock band. I co-wrote, produced, played a bunch of things on it, so I hope you enjoy it. In our last few videos, we broke down our templates. We're just going to really break down the mix and show how this template is. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Let's dig in. So first up, we have our top two tracks, which is our mix print track. You can see it's enabled so we could hear it. Bussing to mix print. And that output of that is our mix aux. Input of that is our Burl B2 bomber. So our analog summing mixers, all the outputs of those go down and get summed as two tracks, which go into the Burl bomber. And that goes back digitally into Pro Tools on this print track. So let's look at our mix aux and our two bus processing. First in line is this Brainworks VSC2, which is a VCA type SSL type compressor, barely touching. Then we have our Greg Wells Mixcentric and a Manly Massive Passive, giving a little bit of high end, a little bit of low end. After that, this is the analog insert of our Dangerous Liaison. Our B path is our mix path. It contains a, a Dangerous Back CQ. It has a Dangerous Compressor and a Tone Lux Compressor. Then we have this Brainworks V2 Digital EQ. I don't really use the EQ anymore. I use it for the stereo widener. You can see it's green, so it's automating and it widens out the choruses a little bit. Then a Fab Filter Pro L and this gives us just a ceiling so we don't go over zero. And then my favorite, the adapter AB. Sorry, it's on my other screen. I'll bring it over. This allows me to look at the frequency response and AB it with other tracks at any time. So let's move down the line and look at this. So yellow is all my VCAs. So I have a VCA for drums, VCA for bass, VCA for percussion, down the line for each group of instruments. And then I have a master VCA. So you can see some automation on this master VCA where I wanted to bump up the first chorus, then I bumped up the second one a little more, and the bridge even a little more than that, and the end it went up considerably. Now you'll notice these are you, these are above zero. I usually keep everything in zero to start. So I probably saw my levels and felt like I could push into everything a little more. So I did it here. And this is a great way to do it because it doesn't affect your compression. It doesn't affect the tone at all. Below that in blue, I have my side chains. We talked about this in many of the other videos. I have uh, many side chains for different purposes. So mainly think of it as this, like the drums and the bass go to one side chain to give them more pump. All the instruments that go out on the sides, like acoustic guitars, definitely keyboards, they go to another set of uh, side chain compression to give it a different feel and a different width. Then I have a, a compressor for mainly for like mid-range bite and attack. If anybody needs that, I feed them into that. I have another side chain for tape. So I feed it into a tape emulator. Then I have more specifics like the kick and the snare here, bass and the kick to glue them together. Then I have a secondary version of the bass and the kick glue and there's a whole bunch of them there's drums for crushing and then the bass has its own set guitars have their own set vocals have their own set so even with the vocals there's three side chains think of them as three different tone shapers so there's a compressor on the first one that has a certain tone the second a completely different tone and the third something else for saturation so they can be used, they can not be used if the song doesn't require it, or they can be written through automation to create changes and feel. So if we look at this one here, my main compressor is this 1176. And I have a little rise on this chorus and a little rise over here all the way to the end. So that makes the lead vocal pop a little more. I have my aux submasters. So since I have a kick, drum or two kick mics and a bunch of samples i have one for the kicks one for the snares one for the toms one for anything metal so cymbal mics overheads hi-hat drum ambience would be any drum room mics then i have one for percussion and if i have loops i have that and if i have claps i like to process the claps a little different so i have that in there so these are all here so let's look at the kick drum the kick drum is an analog insert it's an 1176 then another analog insert to my outboard Manly Pultec. And then another analog insert to my Tone Lux EQ. So these are set the same. I never really change them. So I, I run 
the instruments through their specific spots. If they sound good, I use it. If they don't, I take it off. And that makes automation really easy. And then these guys feed all the side chains we discussed above. Snare, same, same exact thing. 1176, Pultec, Tone Lux. Tom Toms, I don't have another two channels of Pultec, so I use that. I like this sound toys. Got my swag on today, thank you guys. Uh, EQ, which is great for boosting high end and point on things. And that takes care of the toms. Oh, also, I, sorry, I have a I have another Tone Lux EQ. Why do I have the outboard EQs on there? So I have a rack full of them back here. So why are these guys on the subs? The only correlation I can make is like, if you're watching TV and then you watched high definition TV, that's what it does. Could I do it in the box? Probably, but I can do it better, faster here. And that's kind of the name of the game. Moving on, percussion and loops, I processed at the source because I didn't have that many of them. If I had a lot of percussion sources or a lot of different loops, I may just process them in the one spot. Then over here, drum chamber, it's a 480 chamber. I like it for, for the drums. Uh, I have this slate reverb. It's a, a, a snare, a CLA snare. It's modeled after the Sony reverb. Uh, I, I like to use the Valhalla tile room, which is an old emulation of a PCM 70, a short room, it's good for kicks. And then I have this revive in case I want a different large, like longer ambience. Moving down to the bases, we have a bass sub, which is the first uh, bass aux master. This is my all around bass sound. So that has two analog inserts at the top. One is the Manly Elop, and the other one is the Dangerous Liaison, which has my API compressor, Tone Lux compressor, and Tone Lux EQ. Now that seems like a lot of compression, but I'm not really hitting most of them. The Elop's doing the heavy lifting, the API's for sound, and the Tone Lux is a great limiter, but it also does something great to the low end. Then I have this Alicia EQ, which adds a lot of bottom end. And then I have a gate, because sometimes the single coil pickups, I have an old P bass, you know, with all this compression on, can wig out a little. So then I have a high bass channel. See, on this, I took out all the low end, boosted the highs, dipped some mids. And then I have this Alicia, it's sort of like a, a transient designer thing. I, I don't know how I ended up on this in my template for bass, but I really liked it. A uh, SSL, which is wonderful, a Pultec, and an 1176. So why would I have all these different things? Okay, so the 1176 brings a lot of attack, and since this is only the highs, I want to hear the finger or the pick attack. The, the Pultec has a different wider band frequency than the SSL. The envelope makes the attack punch. And obviously the Pro Q2 is the difference between it sounding like, like this channel because I'm filtering out the lows. Then I like to have a sub aux available and that's this Brainworks Plugin Alliance uh, sub. So this, this generates like a subharmonic octave frequency. Guitars, pretty much on these, there wasn't a lot of guitars that were layered. Most of the time on guitars, you will see this for me, Crane Song tape emulator, or an LA3A is great for guitars. And uh, sometimes I have the UAD Vision Channel or the Trident EQ in there because it has a low, like a 750 that really makes the guitars warm. Moving to acoustic guitars, this is magic on, on the acoustics. And then I have the API 2500 compressor. I really like it on acoustics. So let's look at the guitar rooms next, effects. A Valhalla is a great plugin. It's 50 bucks. It's awesome. And the room in here is one of the best ones ever. Uh, my buddies, again, Sound Toys. Um, I worked a long time trying to copy the sound of my PCM42s. They were an 80s uh, digital echo unit that was great. And uh, it sort of took a few pieces to get it. But it's basically like a, a, a digital delay with not much high end or low and kind of bit crushed with some modulation. And this was my combo to make this happen. So I have an eighth note and a quarter note at the ready. Then we have organ on the mains. I don't have anything that's processed right at the organ. And uh, for any longer reverbs, I kind of I think for longer decay, I like this plate, Abbey Road plate. So let's before we jump to the vocals, let's take a listen to the individual channels and see how the things that are happening on their submasters are working. So down here in red are all our drums. So on 
on every one of my individual channels, I usually have a Pro-Q2 and an SSL channel strip. So I'm, I'm treating this like this is my console, except in my, in my mind, it, in the old days, it would've been great to have an SSL console and then have like a Massenburg EQ for the real technical digging in stuff. So the Pro-Q takes care of that and the shelving, and then the SSL takes care of the console things. So there's a kick. Then there's a kick sample. And this is the CLA samples through, uh, through the trigger. Now what I do is, if you'll notice, the kick, the kick sample, the second one, which is a uh, Billy Decker, his samples, great engineer out of Nashville, those are all routed to the kick aux sub. Now if you notice down here, kick sample ambient, that's routed to the drum ambient bus, right? So here's drum ambient bus. So why are they routed to two different places? Well, on the ambient samples, there's more of a room sound and I want it to be stereo. On the straight up kick samples, I want it to be mono. So with the summing mixer, the advantage you have is you have these stereo mono buttons. In my case, my kick, my bass, my snare, and my lead vocals are dead center mono. True analog mono, hardwired, not mathematical mono like in a DAW. Once you use a summing mixer and you figure out what's gonna be in mono, then all of a sudden the, the height and the middle open up for you. And that's kind of why I got into it when I did and I've stuck with it. Here I have the ambient part of the, of the CLA sample, which was all the, the overheads and all the different room mics and whatever effects he put on it. Then it's a very similar thing with the snare. I have a snare. I have, I have snare samples, CLA samples, CLA ambient samples, some Billy Decker samples. And then the rest of it straight up goes down the line, nothing fancy until we get to the overheads. I added this because it's really simple to add on. It adds a little something that was really good. Sort of tucks the snare and gives you something nice for the cymbals. And you'll notice on all of these, you'll see auto align. And this is a phase alignment tool. So you can, without having to manually move everything at a sample level to line them up, that will take care of it for you. It'll move them forward or back based on you send a signal to it from a source. So my overhead mics determine where everything else goes. And then from there, they all follow different paths. And it's phase aligned and it takes like a couple of minutes. Then we had percussion, we had hi-hats, we had tambourine, stick tambourine. We had the clap. Um, same thing on the clap, I did something different. I added some overdrive that I blended down a little bit just to give it some character. And then we had a loop. So the loop has multiple layers of things. So why don't I explain the loop because it starts out the song. Here's the sound of the loop in the verse. So I have three channels where I duplicated the loop. So let's hear the initial loop. Cool, so let's hear the initial loop if I shut off most of this stuff. So I just decided on this guy to roll off some of the low end. This guy rolled off a little more, but I boosted at a certain point and just boosted some smack up in there. And the FabFilter Pro MB is a multiband compressor. So sometimes the kick felt a little heavy for me, so I had that. Then I have as an option later on in the song in the breakdown, I think. I popped this in so all the low end would be taken out and it'd be a little more funky without the kick for some part of the song. Now, I have the secondary track here and we'll take the automation off so I can raise the level. Let's hear this. So what's different about this one is I dipped out a bunch of things and then I processed it with this, which is cool. Let's hear it without it and with it. So that's our distortion generator. And then I have the uh, arouser, which is the distressor software. 
So here's those two out, and then I'll put them both on. If I take out the Pro Q, it sounds like the other loop. So here it goes. So if we put the two of those together. With that. So I have the option of having that sort of lo-fi trashy one in there if I want, and I can ride them up and down. Then the third one is just high end, the hi-hat more and maybe the snare. So I, I filtered out some, I compressed a little to bring up this quiet stuff. Then I put this overdrive on to, to make it have a little bite. And then I put this Brower, uh, this Pan Man on, sorry, another sound toys. So let's hear this one. It was just something different to make it sound not so staticky. So, so let's hear all three together and see what they sound like. Second half of the verse, you'll notice some stuff is grayed out. So the drums come in in the chorus, then they come in in the second half of the second verse. So the ambient samples and these bigger drum samples on the kick and the snare didn't really work there. So here's a little bit of the first half of the second verse into the second half with the drums. So they all have to work together. So that was the point of taking out some of those samples. All right, so let's move down to the bass. We have a DI, we have an SVT, which is sort of bright and growly. The Sans amp, which is sort of the little growly lower mids and the B15 for all the lows. So let's check those out one at a time. We'll grab a chorus and we'll take a listen. DI. SVT. Sans amp. B15. Here's all of them together. So, something to consider is how these aux submasters, since they're molted, affect the bass. So here's, here's the bass through just one aux submaster. Adding the highs. Now adding the sub. What happens with the bass is rather than EQing the heck out of the actual bass track, which really kind of ruins the sound of it, you can create mults. It's almost like having a crossover, like in an old PA system, you have the lows, the highs, the mids. So I created one bass track for the overall bass sound that's pleasant over most of the frequencies, one for the high end that gives you the feel of the neck, and then I have a bass sub for some extra extension. And that is really being all fed from the four bass sources, which is the sub -E amp, the high end -E amp, the little growly mid-range amp, and the DI. Okay, let's look at the acoustics. So we have one acoustic guitar that's doubled. Now, what's interesting is we have this Papoose, which is a tenor guitar. It's sort of way, my way of emulating a mandolin without learning to tune it and string it up. And then we have a guitar that's capoed up pretty high. So 
So that's a little different voicing and it's a little lower than the than the papu so it supports under it and then the acoustics fill out more of a broader spectrum so let's hear all the acoustics together in the chorus so let's examine these two plugins on the aux master and see how much they do so here's the acoustics without these two on So you can see what this Billy Decker does like some quick magic to get it tucked in. So alone, you might say, well, I liked them better without all that stuff on. But the trick is they have to fit in the track. So the acoustic takes up a, a, double, a double job. It does harmonic duties by outlining the chords, but it does rhythmic duties. So the strumming is almost like a shaker hi-hat or tambourine in the, in the choruses especially. And they get fed to that Valhalla medium room app. Let's go down and look at those actually right now. So I have a bunch of reverbs for the band. So I have a blend verb, which is a, a cello studios room. I have two of them. They're set a little different. One's longer than the other. I can send everybody to that in varying degrees to make you feel like it was cut in, in one room and not overdubbed. And then I also have available for the guitars. I have a medium room. And then I have a small room, which is a, uh, a little wooden room. And that's great for vocals when you don't want it to be super wet and be a little dry. So you have a bunch of different lengths of reverbs and types tonally. And if you notice under here, they all have an SSL channel, but they're bypassed. So if I need to EQ them, you know, to make them fit better, that, that'll work. So let's slide up to the electric guitars not that dense this mix so we'll check out we have a main guitar that gets is strummed so it's got a little hair on it not too much and all they have is the same pro q2 in the ssl now you'll see this guy the akg it's it's automated so we're going to jump over here So I wanted to play like a sub hook in the second verse, so I decided to kick in the tremolo pedal and then play that part. But to go with the tremolo, you kind of need the spring reverb. And here's the trem. Nothing complicated. Then I have a slide guitar here. So there's one mono track, which is the actual slide part. And then the stereo track is the delay return. So what I usually have at hand is I have two Eventide H9s besides my Eclipses. And um, I'll set them up for different things while I'm tracking guitars and route them back to a stereo track so it's printed. So here's, here's a little bit of this solo. <laughs> context then in the bridge I have a couple of them harmonies and whatnot and some go up in the second half to lift the bridge a little bit So if you notice the volume jumped down, I was raising him up around the vocal. Then a little bit of fanciness here right before the chorus. Just a chord, I reversed it and panned it across. To give a little something for a transition. Then going out, we have a nice telly solo kind of fill thing.
So that's a perfectly fine sound alone, but I felt like it needed more. So the next thing I added was this Kramer tape, which fattens it up a little bit and has a little slapback vibe. Then I decided to add a touch of micro pitch shift, which probably doesn't make any sense in a sort of a country song, but it, it made it sound a little more modern. Then on top of that, I added this uh, CLA guitar plugin, and I only really used a little reverb and a little more delay. So in solo, it sounds like way too much. In context, it's fine. So sometimes you have your template and then you go for the quickest tool you know you can grab to make the thing happen. Then we have a B3. And I'm using the Saturn for a little saturation. I'm also filtering out some lows to make it fit better in the track and some highs. So I'm not letting the complete response go through. And then we have a little upper mids and lower mids poking out. Moving on to the vocals. Same thing on every channel. So we have something different in this respect that we have a lead vocal track just for the verse. Then we have a different track just for the chorus and the bridge. So this allows me to set up different levels for them and different EQs to pay, depending upon what's happening. If a singer is singing higher in a different register, it may change the EQ and that might not be flattering or it may. So you just have to work that out, split up a track, it's pretty easy. So since this is a two singer band, we have the other singer, his tracks down here. And then there's some doubles for the bridge. Down here we have these telephone echoes. Let's review that real quick. So coming out of the bridge, we have and I see you turn the lights on in my brain, brain, brain. And so all that is is the word brain repeated and filtered and panned so to me it's easier to just grab the one word it's copy the track cut out the other words keep the one word you want move it where you want do the same thing to the second track throw some filtering EQ on it and place it where you want. So over here we have all our background vocals, these like four or so. So what's cool is down here we have these pads. So if you notice on the pads, I don't have the Pro Q and the SSL on every channel. Since they're all fairly similar and they're singing with a similar timbre and a similar register, I just put the Pro Q and the SSL up on the on the bus, Aux Master. Talking part here, which was processed in a little bit of a weird way. Move on over me slowly. Move on over me slow. Move on over me slow. So how did we get this to happen? We put the telephone filter on the CL. AFX, we have the a short delay and a little bit of a room. Then we have this filter. We're taking out a bunch of highs and lows. Then we have this uh, Brower Motion plugin, which gives a little panning thing. Move on over me slowly. Move on over me slow. Move on over me slow. Now, if we heard it without the, any of that, this is what it would sound like. Move on over me slowly. Move on over me. Perfectly normal. Then you have these three. Perfectly mangled. Move on over me slowly. Move on over me slow. Move on over me slow. Move on over me slowly. Cool. So let's quickly talk about each little bit, each section. So if you notice right here, this shut off, I use this filter to take out some of the highs and lows of the acoustic guitar so it wasn't as bright as it was in the chorus, because in the chorus it has to compete with everybody else. So you'll see some rides in the bass where like the, 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 the bass levels may change, DI uh, to amp, and same thing in the aux's highs to lows because it may have sat better in that section of the song. Plus you want to create excitement and you want to create some kind of transition from section to section. So on our vocals, in the verse, you'll notice it was kind of dry. So I used the small room vocal in the verse. And then when I got to the choruses and the bridge, I used like the more traditional 
full plate reverb. That's a CLA patch. It's a 480, but it has a lot of pre-delay, me medium release time. Then also on the vocals in the verses, I use this Waves ADT, which is a nice tape doubler. Uh, it gives a cool old school sound without sounding too chorusy. And then in the choruses, it would jump to my favorite and their micro pitch shift setting was great. And I also put on that a little widener to help it go wider. I used to have an Echoplex and a Roland Space Echo. They were great. Uh, but maintenance and, and having it sit behind my head back here, it was spinning around. It was kind of noisy. So this plugin's pretty close. So I set that to like 166 to give a tape, tape echo vibe. And that happens pretty much in all sections. Then I have a, uh, a delay, eighth note and a quarter note, my PCM42 presets. Then I have two eclipses outboard, and they're set up to be used for micro pitch shift, which is a little bit different than the one I'm using for the lead vocal, different quality for the background so they don't mush too much together. And then the second one is set for a richer chorus patch, which helps for backgrounds and I can alternate between them. Some of the backgrounds on the pads, I may add this dimension D for even a little more chorus. So this AMS reverb is great. And I'll have this set for like a vocal ambience to use with backgrounds so it's different than lead. CLA effects is good for a delay throw if I want to use it. I didn't use it on this tune. We review these blend reverbs to mix people together into a room. So let's talk a little bit. We'll go verse to chorus. So we're pretty much filling out all the frequencies there. So you can hear the difference between the verse and the chorus. And the idea is to make certain things smaller so the big things sound bigger. And we're really trying to like peek out a bunch in the bridge. So let's hear a little bit into the bridge. Pop the Leslie on those. So we had that slide up out of the breakdown. So to add a little more drama to it, we added that reverse symbol in there as well. So it's kind of sucks you right into the chorus. So there it is. Anatomy of a Mix, Tennessee T by Cumberland Road. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we have more content. Shoot us a comment, question, suggestions. Anything you'd like, we'll get back to you. We're curious about what you think and what you'd like to see and hear on the channel. Thanks again. Stay healthy. Happy mixing.